Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We've had a little bit of a break since breeding season. Um, so we thought we'd bring another video to you guys, just showing you the update of what we've been doing on the farm. So just after Christmas, we had a huge uh, winter storm. So now we finally have winter. And uh, the last week we've been dealing with some very cold temperatures. It is currently eight degrees. And our overnight low was negative seven, and that is actually going to get lower in a couple days. So we're out here bundled up because it is gonna be super cold, but we'll go check on the animals and see how they're looking since breeding season. So to prepare all these guys for winter, um, we just start piling in a deep layer of straw and once it gets soiled, we just add to it so that they can have a nice deep bed to nestle into that helps insulate their bodies from the cold ground um, and keep that heat a little bit more around them and besides they can cuddle together. Um, but also, they're nice fluffy winter coats, so being exposed to the cold over time is basically what's um, triggering their bodies to grow this lush cashmere underneath um, their fur. So this like really thick fur insulates them as well um, from the cold temperatures. And since obviously being exposed to that over time is what, what causes them to grow that coat. But a lot of them you can tell how way more like curly fluffy Fiona is. But that's just that thick cashmere coat in there that's keeping their bodies insulated. Another thing that you can see is when the snow is coming down on them, it'll actually just um, like pile on top of them and the snow won't melt. So that is a good sign. If your goats have snow on their backs that hasn't melted, that means their body heat is not escaping. That means that that is not melting the snow on top of them. If you notice that your goats aren't keeping um, snow on them, that they're actually uh, melting. That means the body heat's escaping from their coat and that's what's melting the snow. So another thing we did is we brought our buckling over into the main area from across the driveway just because that pasture isn't well set up um, to house him through the winter. It's fine for summer and spring, but winter is a lot it's more exposed over there. Um, so since everybody is bred and settled, he is just fine to be over here with the main herd. Um, he may torment them just a little bit, but he's, um, he's not going to be breeding any does because they've already bred and already settled. So um, we don't have to worry about that. The only thing is we just need to uh, relocate him before we get close to having babies, and that won't be until May. So he's good to hang out here until then. So another thing that I've probably mentioned before, um, when you have really cold temperatures, especially when they start dropping a little colder than normal, um, you just want to make sure that your herd is well fed because um, this is how they're able to, to create energy and heat um, in order to deal with these cold temperatures is being able to eat plenty and keep their bellies full. So. We'll usually do grain in the mornings and then alfalfa 
and then sometimes I'll wait and give them their grain in the evening um, and their alfalfa in the morning just so that they have some high energy feed going into the night. But we're giving our doves grain still um, as part of our flushing project. So we'll probably continue that for um, probably the majority of January and then we'll start tapering it off and then we won't start graining them again until um, right close to when they're going to give um, their kids. So about a month before they give their kids, we'll start graining again. So that does it for our goats. Everyone did well overnight. Um, they're all looking good and acting good. We're just continuing to monitor them through this first part of their gestation. And then we will be expecting our kids in May. So let's go check on our chickens. Um, another thing I wanted to show you guys is see how in the middle of the main area, it's uh, relatively flat. There's not as much drifted snow in the middle. Um, we get a lot of wind from the southern side and so in the attempts to try to keep drifts from getting huge into the pasture trevor put up all these boards and all of the random pieces of scrap wood to try to keep the drifts down And it's still kind of drifted up along the fence line, which really isn't a big deal. And we have this huge drift right here, but for the most part, it's keeping it out of this main area. So the goats have um, a little bit less snow to hike through to get to their water trough. as far as our heater cord is going to reach so they still have to come get some exercise to get their water but for the most part the drifts haven't been as bad because we've put up some some blockades to try to keep it from coming all the way through this area The one thing we do for our chickens is not only do we give them a little bit of extra feed in the evening so that they can go to bed with fuel for their furnace um, because chickens they're wearing a fluffy down coat they will stay really warm you just have to make sure they have fuel for that furnace um, to keep them warm so that's one of my favorite favorite little posts is basically I'll put it up on the screen but it's basically like you know you're fueling their fire and the chicken is kind of like a little fireplace and as long as there's fuel in there they'll keep warm Another thing that we ended up doing is we had this piece of tarp from when we um, got a new tarp for our little like out shed thing that we put some of our outside like motorcycles and four wheelers and, and other equipment in. Um, so we had this piece and we decided that we install it on this side of the chicken coop just as a temporary measure, but this is where the wind comes from. So this is just an added um, layer of keeping the coop warmer because the wind can't penetrate through this nest box. Yeah, 
added benefit to the fact that there's zippers on them so we can get to it but the wind no matter how like secure we make this the wind can still penetrate in through the cracks and so when there's blowing snow there is a little layer that can get into this nest box so we just wanted to make sure that it was good and secure for winter Even with negative um, temperatures, we're still getting a couple eggs from some of our really good hens. So, added bonus, keep your nest boxes cozy. So I'll keep laying for you. Hey, hold this. Is it warm or cold? It's a little bit warm. We did also decide to cover the door a little bit because that's just going to keep any blowing snow from getting through those little flaps. Um, like I said, just as a, an added layer of um, security. Well, that does it for this really cold farm update. Thanks for coming with us and checking on the animals on this super cold winter. Um, so just stay tuned. We'll have a few videos here and there. Our next fun and exciting things will be when we're hatching out our chicks. And then after that, we'll be kidding season, which is the best part of the farm. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time.